Hi everyone and welcome back to Kelly's Kitchen on Big Oggy World. Now you may have watched our mail time video earlier in which case you would have heard me mention that I was going to make a minestrone soup. And as you know we've made several soups recently because John and I are doing a juice fast. And part of that is that we are having various vegetable soups in the evening. So I tried this a couple of days ago. We both love minestrone soup, but we've only ever had, or I've only ever had a fresh one once before. And that was in Foy and it was delicious. So we decided that we would make one because it's a bit heartier than the pureed soups that we're constantly eating. And quite frankly, you just get bored and you want something to chew. So we made this last week and it was an absolute triumph. So much so that we ate it for three times, three days on a trot. So it's a big recipe, but it's a cheap recipe. And if you are struggling with money at the minute, the most expensive thing that you're gonna to have to buy is just three rashers of streaky bacon and that's it. Everything else I would say is pretty much cheap as chips. So it's, it's not a tomato based recipe, which a lot of uh, minestrone soups are. This is a chicken stock based recipe. So it's sort of, would you call it white? Would you call, I call it, it white? A white, a white soup. Um, just like to mention, yes, we are predominantly vegetarian right now, but there is a bit of bacon in this and we are using chicken stock, but you can use vegetable stock if you wish. If you want, but the recipe calls for chicken stock. We used chicken stock last week and it was lush quite frankly. So the other thing that I've changed is that the recipe asks for one of this and one of that and whatever, but depending on the size of your produce, it's not always necessarily the right thing. So, and I've also added a couple of extra things just because we've had them lying around and why not use them up? It's basically a, a, you know, a vegetable soup. That's what you can do with minestrone. We Absolutely. actually looked at various minestrone soups after having this one. And there's, there are variations all over Italy. Everyone's got their own version of minestrone soup. So it's just basically a basic method plus whatever you've got to hand. Absolutely. So I've used baby courgettes and that's two, although the recipe only asks for one courgette, but I'm guessing if you have a big courgette, it will be the same as two baby ones. Yep. I've got two carrots, but again, they weren't particularly big carrots and it asks for a large carrot. So you have to use your sort of loaf of it. Put it what you like. Absolutely. I'm adding leeks, that's not in the recipe at all, but we have leeks and why not use them. And I've also got some spring greens um, that were just sat in the fridge. I didn't want to juice because they're quite tough, so I finally chopped them and I'm going to bung them in as well. Quite, you know. I think last time we did this we had a couple of spare cabbages. We a bit of cabbage, yeah. A bit of savoy, a bit of hispy, kind of any, any kind it's of a sweet hard cabbage, yeah. Hard cabbage, yeah. So, and obviously you need baby pasta. Now this stuff, I just think is amazing because it looks nothing in the dish. There's a hundred grams there, but once you put it into your soup and it's swelled, my God, you know there is pasta in that soup, okay? The other thing it does ask for is two potatoes, but because we're trying to keep down on our carbs, I've only used one potato. So, you know, you mix and match it to what you want. Yeah, we've already got carbs in the pasta. Exactly. So, so you mix and match it to how you want it to be. So, to start off with, literally all you do is you heat your olive oil in a pan with your onions, bacon, and garlic. Now, I'm not using a garlic pot, I'm using garlic paste because this works much better for John and I. Um, sometimes we go through loads of garlic and sometimes we just waste a bulb, so this is much better for us. So I'm gonna get some heat on the pan and start that going and then we'll come back. John well, can come over. Wanna we'll quickly show the book that we get this, the main recipe from? Because there are various versions, but we are using. We are using Antonio um, Carluccio's The Collection. There's about three books in that, so. Um, and although we are doing a minestrone, the recipe right next to it is for a mushroom minestrone. So obviously, like we said, there's variations in the recipes. So yeah, like I said, very simple recipe, um, brilliant for feeding the family. So let's get some heat on and start cooking. 
So all this is now softened and now we're going to start adding our vegetables. So, first off, leeks and celery, in it goes. Then, courgette, carrots and tomato, in it goes. Potato, in it goes, excuse me while I strain it. So what you put in first, that's just been fried up, was basically bacon, onions, garlic, yeah? That's right, that's all. Okay. In go the potatoes. Now give all this a good stir around so that it gets some of the oil from the bacon and the onions. So you, you basically sweat it down the onions, no real colour? No colour, you're just literally sweating them down. Give it all a good stir like that. And now we are going to add about 900 mils to a, a litre of chicken stock. Obviously if you don't want to use chicken stock, use vegetable stock. If you don't want to put bacon in, don't put bacon in. You're literally putting a tiny bit in to give it a little bit of a smoky taste. It's slightly sm our bacon is slightly smoky, isn't it? You can use smoky lard on freeze and streaky to top it up. In goes the stock. So any any basic stock cube, it could be an Oxo one, it could be a Nor, there's loads of different brands on the market, use whichever one you like. There. Gotta say it's just beautifully colourful already. I do love a colourful recipe, don't you? That's good. Now, we're going to bring that up to a good simmer, not a boil, but just sort of get it bubbling away. And then we're going to leave it for 10 minutes and come back and start adding some more. So this is it for the next 10 minutes. Also at this point, you add your little bit of basil. Always forget the bit of herb, don't we love? We do but it literally is just a few leaves of basil. Chop. So as you can see, it's all nicely bubbling away and now you just add what's left of your ingredients. So we are using a tin of cannellini beans. The recipe actually causes for, calls for borlotti beans, which we did last time. Um, but I thought we'd have cannellini for a change. You can have either one. So in they go. The bolotti ended up being quite meaty, I thought, didn't you? Give a bit of a meaty edge to it. Yeah. So I'd be interested to see what the cannellini beans do. But them a bit of a stir. To be honest, again, if you've got any of these kind of beans, what are the other ones? What's the one that you've used for baked beans? Um, the haricot beans or? Haricot. Yeah, all those kind of ones will work. If you've got beans in the cupboard, like not dry, baked dry beans, 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 yeah, but, tins, you know, yeah. use whatever you've got. Obviously, you've got dry ones, you've got to leave them to soak them. You need to soak them, yeah. Then you're going to add salt and pepper. So there's quite a lot of veg in there, so give it a good, good season. Bit of season. And go some pepper. Oops. Pepper. And obviously, seeing it there is a taste. I mean, that's what it is. Then you're going to add your baby pasta. We've got little baby stars, but you can use any baby pasta you want. And if you don't have baby pasta, you could even smash up some spaghetti or some stuff like that. That'd be long spaghetti, you make it really short. You <laughs> can use spaghetti, or you could use any pasta. If you don't want baby pasta, you could put normal size pasta in, but you just would have to increase the cooking time. So in goes the baby pasta. Get that stirring. Now obviously the pasta is going to take up some of the liquid and it's going to swell. So you need to keep an eye on it to make sure that you don't need to add either more stock or you could just add boiling water, but do keep an eye on it. And the last thing I'm going to add is my shredded cabbage but you obviously don't need to add cabbage if you don't want to. Yeah, we're using spring greens, aren't we, I think? Yeah, spring greens. Savoy would be really good. So just stir it all in. Now 
technically, according to the book, that needs another 10 minutes to allow the pasta to cook so that it's al dente. Now, we know on the mail time you don't do al dente, do I you? I don't know? like al dente. I don't like my vegetables al dente either. So our soup will probably be cooking for another 15 to 20 minutes and actually it will be on the stove a lot longer than that. Not on, but it will be sat on the stove because this is for our dinner this evening. It's only mid-afternoon if you see the clock behind you. Absolutely. Right? So um, you can reheat it successfully. We tried it last week and reheated it a couple of times. Obviously, we, we took out the portion. We didn't reheat the whole bowl. Um, but yeah, you can reheat it. And I'm actually going to give it a go and freeze some today and see what happens. The last thing I need to check on that though is if I can freeze beans because I'm not sure. Yeah, we didn't freeze it last time. That's why we had it three days in a row. Because that there's a lot of yeah. there's a lot of veg and stuff in there. But it is a massively substantial. This soup. allegedly would serve four people. I failed to see how four people would eat this. Quite frankly, there's there's, there's stacks. There is an awful lot. We did six portions, didn't we? At least I think in I the think end there was still did. a little bit left over. We didn't eat. Yeah, we did. So, um, but it does get more delicious the more it's left yeah, because like the flavours get kind of, rounded. Yeah. Um, and that's basically it. That's You're it, just going to leave it? it to cook. It's so simple, so cheap. You can make it even cheaper if you leave out the bacon. You don't need the bacon, it's just there for taste. And just throw in whatever vegetables you've got. If you've got like a veg box with vegetables that are hanging around and you need to get rid of before next week, buy them in a stew, a soup, a minestrone. I, I know they say, certainly in some of the books we've read, and there was a Jane Oliver one we discussed as well, and they'll see that we use the Carluccio's one, the Gennaro Contaldo, is that right? Yeah. Um, we had his as well, so we've got a whole bunch of books. And they're kind of saying that different different regions in Italy have different versions and obviously they change with the seasons, like you said. So whatever season at the time, it could be a hearty veg soup in the winter and a lighter veg soup in, in the, the summer. Spring. But look at that. I mean, if that isn't a whole bowl full of absolute goodness, then I don't know what is, quite frankly. I agree. So, you know, give it a go. I can guarantee that you won't regret it. It's absolutely delicious. Give it a go and um, we'll come back later when we're dishing up and show you what it looks like in, in a bowl with a little bit of pecorino trees over. See you all in a while. So there is our ruddy minestrone soup with a little bit of pecorino cheese on the top to make it yummy. Um, fantastic recipe, as I said, do try it. As we said, chuck in all the stuff that you got to use up and it will be amazing. Come and join us all again soon. If you've not subscribed, please do. Please hit the notification bell and come and join us again at Big Oggy World. Bye for now, everyone.